almost everything that happens in your cells is coordinated by or run by different proteins. How these proteins are made is important for us biologists to understand, and that's why it's important for you to learn too. We have arrived at the protein synthesis, and in this part I'll talk about the transcription. But first, let's have a look at what proteins are. This may be a little bit of repetition from earlier videos that I've made, but that doesn't really matter. Here you can see a short video showing an ordinary protein. What I want you to notice is that proteins are very large molecules, much larger than, say, a water molecule or a glucose molecule. That's why proteins are called macromolecules. DNA and RNA are other macromolecules as well. In this biology course, we won't go into the chemical details of the protein structure. Instead, I want you to write down that proteins are made of amino acids. The amino acids are linked together in a long, long chain, somewhat like beads on a string like this. Here, I have some examples of amino acids. PHE stands for phenylalanine, ala for alanine, ser for serine, his for histidine, for different kinds of amino acids. You don't need to learn the chemical structure for an amino acid until you study chemistry, but I still want to show you what an amino acid looks like. This is the structure of alanine. Different amino acids have different R groups, and on alanine it is a methyl group, CH3. But how are the amino acids linked together? And how does the cell know in what order to link them together? Well, this is exactly what this video and the two following is all about. To understand how this is achieved, you also need to remember what the functions of a DNA molecule is. First, the DNA molecule contains recipes or information on how different proteins are made. Second, the DNA molecule has the ability to pass this information on to the next generation. These recipes for proteins are first transcribed into RNA or even mRNA as we write here. This simply means that the information stored in the DNA molecule is rewritten in the form of RNA instead. This information is then translated into proteins. And, as I said earlier, the proteins coordinate almost all of the cell's functions, for example, replication of the DNA molecule itself. Now, if you copied this image, you have a picture, a concept map of the DNA molecule's two functions. All right then, as I said, the DNA molecule contains recipes for all the proteins in the cell. If you've seen my previous videos, you have also already seen this image of a DNA molecule. Here we have the backbones of the double helix with alternating sugar and phosphate residues. In between them we have the nucleobases, where A always pairs with T and C always pairs with G. Now, we extend this to a much longer part of a DNA molecule. A certain part of a DNA molecule which carries this information or recipe for a protein, we call that a gene. The information is a sort of a code, and that's why we say that a certain gene codes for a certain protein. These are things that you need to keep in the back of your head when we start to discuss what happens next, that is, transcription. Now, there will be a few animations, and then there will be other things that you really should copy to your notes. I'll tell you when it's animation time and when to write something down. And you may actually start by writing this down, that in the transcription, the information in the DNA molecule is rewritten as RNA. And this is actually exactly what transcription means. Trans means across, and scription, well, it has to do with scripts and writing, so transcription is just a kind of rewriting of the DNA. Now, don't draw this quite yet. What happens in the transcription is that a large protein complex, or rather enzyme complex, called the RNA polymerase binds to the DNA molecule. The purpose of the RNA polymerase, it is that it synthesizes RNA. When the RNA polymerase binds to the DNA molecule, it sort of opens up the DNA like this, forming what is called a transcription bubble. The transcription takes place inside of this transcription bubble, which, by the way, you may copy now. What happens is this, that all around in the nucleus, if it's a eukaryotic cell, or in the cytoplasm, if it's a bacterium, there are lots and lots of nucleotides. 
These nucleotides may be used to build or synthesize a new RNA molecule, and this is how it's done. Here, some RNA has already been built, in this case, some mRNA. What's important is that over here, new nucleotides are added one after another, somewhat like this. Now, look at this nucleotide, watch carefully what happens to it. It enters the transcription bubble and is linked together with the rest of the RNA molecule, like this. At the same time, the RNA polymerase moves along the DNA molecule, allowing the RNA to grow longer and longer until the whole gene has been transcribed. Now, this is essentially what happens during the transcription. So, if you have copied this image, let's move on to how the information in the DNA molecule is transcribed to RNA. To do this, you need to understand how base pairing works. In a DNA molecule, we have, for example, T and G and A and C and then a T again and an A. The order in which these letters appear is the information, just like the order of letters in a word, a sentence or a book contains information. Because the different nucleobases always form specific pairs, the information may be copied. For example, here, a T in the DNA molecule always base pairs with an A in an RNA molecule. Yeah, this is supposed to be an RNA molecule here. I made it with a different color to show this. Down here, we have the part of the DNA that has been opened up in the transcription bubble. Also, if we have a G here in the DNA molecule, it always base pairs with C in the RNA molecule. But look here. If we have an A in the DNA molecule, it always pairs with a U, that is uracil, in the RNA molecule. This is one of the ways that RNA differs from DNA. Why the RNA uses uracil instead of thymine is, unfortunately, beyond the scope of this course. You'll just have to learn that that's the way it is. So, what happens during transcription? Well, here we have a nucleotide that fits with the A down here. The nucleotide, as you have seen in my previous videos, consists of a sugar residue with an attached nucleobase, in this case uracil, or U, and three phosphate groups. You go ahead and copy this image too, because now there will be some animations. What happens now is that the uracil base pairs with the adenine, at the same time as the two outermost phosphate groups are cleaved off, like this. The RNA molecule becomes longer, it is elongated and the process is repeated until the entire gene has been transcribed. Now, if you copy this image too, you have a nice picture of how the RNA molecule is synthesized. Let's write something about base pairing too, so you understand it completely. We make a small table like this, and we write that in the DNA molecule, if we have an A, it base pairs with a U in the RNA molecule. If we have a T in the DNA, it base pairs with A in the RNA. And if we have a C, it base pairs with G. And a G in DNA also base pairs with C in the RNA molecule. And, well, now I have actually told you about what happens during transcription. That is, when an RNA molecule is synthesized. The next steps in the process of protein synthesis is how the RNA molecule first matures and then how the information in the RNA molecule is translated into protein. But that will be the subject of the two following videos.